So what is the Maker's Roadmap? The Maker's Roadmap is a four-stage system that takes you from idea to setting up your shop for success to getting consistent traffic and sales and beyond. The four stages of the Maker's Roadmap are dream, start, grow, and scale. And by following the steps outlined under each stage of the Maker's Roadmap, which we're about to dive into, you're going to work more efficiently, save yourself time, and get better results because each step builds upon the last. Now, and that's really important, if you already have a shop that's open, whether it's on your own website or on an online marketplace, the temptation will be to skip the first two stages, dream and start, and to dive directly into the grow stage. Now, skipping ahead might be the exact reason why you find yourself stuck or hitting a plateau after your shop opens. So if you are serious about growing a successful handmade business, I strongly recommend you fight the urge to do so and start from the beginning to make sure they have solid foundations in place. Then you can move confidently to the grow and scale stage. This is going to allow you to make sure that you didn't miss any important steps when you first got started. And if you did, you will know exactly which ones that was and how to course correct. The first stage is the dream stage. So what is the dream stage? The dream stage is about laying the groundwork for a successful shop. It's about validating a business idea so you can move forward confidently. It's about understanding deeply your market and your customers and getting clarity on what your brand will be about. Most handmade shop owners skip this part and this is the reason why nothing seems to really work the way they want after that. This stage is incredibly important. Any strategic decision that you're going to make later for your handmade business, including any marketing strategy that you're going to develop, is going to be based on the insight that you will gain and the strategic decisions that you're going to make during the dream stage. So really don't skip ahead and make sure to follow the steps in the dream stage first. So what's in the dream stage? What are the things that you should be working on when you are in the dream stage? First, your ideal customers. It's really important to get a clear understanding of who you want to sell your products to. So who are your ideal customers? And it cannot be anyone, everyone. And I know this is a temptation is to think, well, anyone could really want to buy my products. Anyone could want to buy this product as a gift for their mother, their brother, their father. It's something that anyone could want. But it's really important to niche down and not to be too broad because when you get to marketing later on in the roadmap, you will see that the more niche you are, the easier it is to develop a marketing plan and to develop a tone of voice and to write captions and content for your shop. So niching down is very important. If you try to appeal to everyone, you will not appeal to anyone. Psychographics are also very important here. I know that when we think about our ideal customers, it's really tempting to say things like, I want to sell my products to women from 25 to 45 year old and really using more demographics to describe them, but demographics aren't as important as psychographics. We really want to understand the psychology of our customers, why they would like our products, the type of lifestyle that they have, the type of home decor that they're into, the kind of movies that they like to watch, so that we can really connect with them in our messaging down the track when we work on marketing. So when you think about your market and your ideal customers, these are the things that you want to think about more so than demographics. And by far, the ideal customer work that you're going to do here is the most important foundation for success. Any decision that you will make for your business after that is going to be driven by the knowledge that you have of your customers. So it's really important to take some time here to do some research and really get clear on who your ideal customers are. The second thing you want to be working on in the dream stage is your brand. Now there is more to a brand than what we actually see. So when we think about branding, we often think about logo, fonts, colors, color palette, and things that are very visual like packaging and graphics and things like that. But there is much more to a brand than that. And in the dream stage, I actually recommend that you do not think at all about anything related to graphic design. So I don't want you to think about your logo. I don't want you to think about your fonts and the colors that you're going to use for your brand. When we think about branding in the very early stages of building a handmade business, 
we want to be focusing only on what I call the intangible elements of your brand. The tangible element would be logo, fonts, graphics, colors. Intangible elements are your vision, your mission, and your values. So what is your brand about? What's the personality of your brand? What vision do you have for this business? What kind of values do your brand and business represent? These are the things that you want to be thinking about here. We'll get to the logo and all of the tangible element in the start stage, but in the dream stage, it's really important that we focus only on those intangible elements. The next thing you wanna do in the dream stage is some market research. You want to be able to name some competitors. You wanna be able to understand who you're going to be competing against. You wanna understand if there's any trends in the market that you're going to enter that you need to keep in mind when you're creating products and when you're marketing products. So you wanna keep in mind seasonal trends. So for example, is there any season in the year, any time of the year where your products are more likely to sell more or less? For example, Christmas, some, some special holidays, or are you selling a products that can be sold all year long? You also want to think about design trends. So is there any sort of aesthetics, style, colors, patterns that are really trending at the moment and that you could use in your products? And you also want to keep in mind influencers. So knowing your ideal customers and who you're trying to sell products to, who are these people following and who is influencing the market in that way? You really want to make sure that there is a demand for your products, of course, and customers willing to pay for them. And you want to understand as you do this research, keep in mind, how can I differentiate myself? How can I position myself in that niche in a way that makes me stand out from what other people are already doing? And that comes through looking at what your competition is doing and getting an idea of what they do well and what they do not so well so that you can create the best possible products and customer service for your shop. The next thing that you wanna do in the dream stage is validate your business idea. Based on the research that Based on the research that you've just done and what you know about yourself, about your skills, about your ideal customers and about your market, is it possible to make money selling this type of product in the time that you have available? It's important to consider time here because you're making products by hand and so sometimes you might think about making a product that's quite time consuming and a bit more complex in the creation process and looking at the market you might realize that you need to simplify those products products a little bit or change the way you create them slightly to adjust to that and to make sure that you can produce enough products without burning out and selling them at a price that is fair for you so that you have enough profit margin and also to meet the demand of the market and be a price that people are willing to pay. So it's important to consider all these different factors after you've done that market research to make sure that this is something that can truly work for you. We also want to look at any possible regulations or restrictions, either nationally or internationally. So if you are, for example, uh, selling items that have uh, natural organic materials in it, some countries might have regulation for that. So if you're going to sell internationally, you want to make sure that it's okay to export your products to those countries. You also want to consider the size and the weight of your items because when it comes to shipping, that's going to reflect on the price and also quite simply the logistics. How are you going to ship those items safely without them breaking, for example, if it's something that's a bit fragile to your customers. So these are things to take into consideration. And we also want to think about, are your products easy to reproduce? Now, it's completely okay to have some products that are custom orders, custom pieces in one of a kind, and that you might sell as a designer item at a higher price, but it's really important to have a collection of items that you know you can reproduce easily. And so generally, you want to use the knowledge that you gain during this dream stage to ask yourself, do I feel confident moving forward with this product and with this business idea? Next, we want to pick a handmade business model. So when I say a handmade business model here, what I really want you to think about is where am I going to be selling my products? 
what channels, sales channels, am I going to use to sell my products to potential customers? So are you going to be focusing on selling online exclusively? Are you also going to be selling at craft fairs and markets? Are you more interested in selling to retail stores and so essentially selling wholesale to some other retailers? Or are you going to try a few different things and maybe have a business model that's a little bit of a mix where maybe you do a little bit of in-person events and craft fairs, but you mostly sell online. You really want to start thinking about your sales channels and what those uh, revenue streams are going to look like for your business. Now, and this is probably my favorite part of the Maker's Roadmap, it's when we decide what we're not going to be working on when we're in the dream stage. Because as tempting as it might be, the dream stage is not the time to design your brand and your logo or even pick a business name. It's not the time to pick a platform or a marketplace and to start building your online shop or your website. It's not the time to start creating a lot of stock of your products or to jump into learning how to use social media for business and to sign up for accounts on each social media platforms that exist out there. So essentially, when you look at the workbooks that come with this training, anything that is not listed in the left column, because I have a little summary there for you, you need to avoid it. So while we've just talked about or is all that you should be working on, I don't want you diving and skipping ahead to things that feel like they're the normal first steps, like launching your shop when you're not quite ready for it. I know that everything inside of the dream stage doesn't feel quite practical. It feels like a lot of research, a lot of theory, and a lot of thinking about your business, but it's very important and very crucial that you do that before you move to the start stage. And speaking of moving to the start stage, I want to give you some green lights that you can use to know when you're ready to move forward out of the dream stage and into the next one, which is the start stage. The first one is that you're able to say, I know who I want to sell my products to. I'm clear on who my ideal customers are. The second is I'm clear about my brand, my brand identity, those intangible. So not the design or the look of it just yet, but I have defined my brand vision, my mission statement, and my values. You want to be able to say, I've done some looking around and I've got a great understanding of my market. I can list competitors, I can list trends, I can list influencers. And you also want to be able to say, I evaluated my product idea to make sure it had the potential to be a successful business and I chose a handmade business model accordingly. When you feel confident with those four points, you're ready to move to the start stage. 